You can't do it. You're such a fake. Oh my God, you can't even do this. You totally deserve to fail because you're, you're faking this. That's about what it sounds like. Hey everyone, this is Becky. And I'm Angie. And welcome to Real Talk with Becky and Angie. Um, what does your inner critic sound like? Is it your own voice? Is it somebody else's voice? What's your sound like? Oh, it's totally me. It's just harsh. It's a harsh version of me. Is it not your voice? Whose voice do you get? Well, today when I was hiking, thinking about this podcast and talking about the inner critic and it's like, what does my inner critic sound like? I think it's my voice, but it's like a, a deeper version of my voice. Almost like how you're, what, the way you're describing yours is almost like a drill sergeant. And it's like a, it's this like deeper, deeper voice than, than I have. And see mine, that's interesting. Mine is not um, like, who do you think you are type of thing? Mine is more like you made a decision, you made a commitment, you're going to stick with this commitment. It's not a second guessing it, but it's more of like, um, you know, well, like I was saying, if you really wanted to, you would do this. Why are you not doing this? You must not really want to do it. So it's almost like this, like um, challenging, more of challenging me than filling me full of doubt. But it's recognizing within yourself what that is, because you see it as a deeper version of Becky. And I've got this like drill sergeant. If our inner critic is there to protect us, which I think that makes sense. At some point, it's like, okay, I've got the wheel now. Uh, thanks. Thanks. I got it now. That's how I look at it. And you know, what comes up for me. Remember we talked about, um, the binge eating, uh, thing last week and how I said part of my overcoming it was seeing my, uh, binge eating disorder as, uh, Harry the Henderson, like as a separate entity. Mm -hmm. What if I kind of wonder what if I took my inner critic and named it and had it be like, okay, okay, Bob, <laughs> I, I just came up with the name. Okay, Bob. Bob. I can be fully entrenched in this whole fight within myself, with my inner critic, and then have this, wait, wait, no. We talk about having self-compassion um, or compassion for yourself and what you say to yourself, would you say to someone else? So catching myself, because we just talked about it last week, was it, and we, well, we kind of talk about it all the time. Um, but I thought about it. It was like, would I say that to Becky? Like, you know, you made poor choices. <laughs> right. Did, are you making poor choices? You're making poor, you obviously don't want it. No, no. Cheer each other on. I would cheer you on. <sighs> so I'm curious, Angie, I heard you say you basically went from inner critic to inner coach mm -hmm. kind of quickly. What, how, how, like, how did you switch? How, how did you flip that switch? What happened? Uh, well, for one, years of, years of practice with that, um, goes back to, mind, to mindfulness and awareness that we've talked about before. You either have the choice of continuing to beat yourself up and feeling like crap and then just quitting, or you catch up, you're like, wait, no, no. Unless in your case, if you're in your case, if you were tr like, you made a good choice, you didn't quit, you stopped and think about, and we're going to, I'm going to circle back to it, but think about when we were in Vail, I probably should not have been hiking. I had a torn, yeah, feel, yeah. don't feel bad. It was my choice. I wanted to do it. I delayed the entire thing. I put myself back at like a year, just being stubborn by not going in and having the um, torn meniscus and some flap thing fixed. And I was afraid I would need a new need a new knee and didn't need it at all. But my inner coach, inner stubbornness said, "Oh no, you don't need to stop." And my inner critic was probably trying to protect me. So I guess we get to honor both sides and look at what that is. But how do I shift gears so quickly? Because I do. I really do. And like, it's like when I go to cry, when I get to a point where I just freaking break down and cry, when I'm done, I'm done. I'm ready to go. Everybody around me might, might be traumatized and I'm sorry. <laughs> but for me, I'm like, okay, let's go. And I think that's the same thing with the, for instance, yesterday. So Jake got to be involved in that conversation. And um, probably if I look back at a text, the, from the time we got off the phone of me being really hard on myself 
to the time I text him the new training pro- program was probably it at the most five minutes. I just switched gears. Like, no, no enough. And enough. take control. Take a band. Take the wheel. I got this. I'm going to figure this out. One thing I've really been working on, really, really, ha- this is new for me, is not overthinking things. I have I'm the, have been known to be the queen of overthinking things. I've said, I plan. I One thing that came up for me in one of my neuropsychological exams and all of the stuff I've been through with the poisoning is ruminating. And I remember getting that on a um, results that I tend to ruminate. And I was like, what the, what is that? Well, then do you know how long I dwelled on that? <laughs> Which is exactly what <laughs> ruminating. Is. How long you ruminated on ruminating? <laughs> yes, uh-huh. I did. Want to That's say hilarious. It that way, but I, it really hit me. Like, <laughs> well, doesn't everybody? Like, if you have something that's bothering you, and then so for me, when I can see and we and identify something, like <laughs> stick a pin in it, I'm like, that's what that is. I can now make a choice to do something different that serves me. My hundred percent on that, absolutely not. However. It's, I'm getting better. I'm getting better and better. So what do you do for your inner critic? How do you know when Bob is rearing, is Bob male? I'm going to go, you know, can't assume anything. Could be Bobby, like, a, you know, she's a girl. With an I. It's a good with question. Yeah, Bobby with an IE. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. It's, go. My inner critic is Bobby with an IE. Okay. Um, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> How do you take control or get back on track when Bobby is rearing her ugly head, her um, dream destroyer. Oh, my God. How do I do that? This is going to take a minute. You think I would have this figured out. First thought, best thought. What do you do? You can't do it. If somebody, so Bobby's saying, you can't do this. Who do you think you are? You're not an athlete. You're such a fake. Oh, my God. You can't even do this. You totally deserve to fail because you're, you're faking this. That's about what it sounds like. That is about what it sounds like. Please don't tell me um, it's my voice. <laughs> it's not your voice. No, I I can't remember if I've said this during uh, one of these recordings at one of our podcasts or not. But, um, I did a program a couple of a few months ago where I was doing a body confidence pr- uh, program with with my people, and I said for that I'm becoming an athlete. Like to actually say those words is is a big deal because I get to choose what being athletic means to me and what I'm training to do will actually give me the title of being an endurance athlete. And so is being athletic, on, the same as being an athlete. It's a great question. I feel like I'm becoming athletic. It's not like, no. <laughs> The right answer is no, it's not. Athletic what, does not mean you're an athlete. Being athletic doesn't mean you're an athlete. Mm-mm. So tell me the difference. It's if, like so being, I don't have to Google it. It's like uh, you can have athletic abilities, you can have athletic agility, you can have skills. An athlete is a higher level of intensity. It's almost it's a level of commitment. It's proficiency. It's just a higher level. It's kind of like we were talking about um, having confidence in overall confidence and then have confidence in doing certain things. So you can be athletic, but to be an athlete is a commitment. It's a um, specific commitment intensity, not just the skills. So, so I'm an athlete. You're an a- Well, are you? I am an athlete. I hear you in there, Bobby. I am an athlete. I am training to be a endurance athlete. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's a big deal. I like that because you said you're an athlete and you're training to be an, an, an endurance athlete. So you're not saying like, I'm training to be an, an athlete. You are an athlete and you're training to be an endurance athlete. That's huge. It, it's, it's huge. It is. So huge. you I need mean, to what? write this and like poster board, the big, like, where can you put that? I am an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Ta- tattoo it on my forehead or something. Everywhere. Put it everywhere. everywhere. I am put an it. athlete. I am an, an athlete. athlete. 
I'm an athlete. You're an athlete. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for myself. 29029, it's not a race. It doesn't ma- it doesn't matter who finishes first. It just matters how much you give that mountain, how much you put forward leave on the mountain. Mm. You may not finish. Only 64% of people, it's a success success rate wow. is 64%. Okay. And uh I God, I wish you didn't know that number. <laughs> I wish you I was surprised it was that number. I thought it was in the seventies and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change my story. I can either have my inner critic can jump in and say, Oh yeah, you're going to be part of the, if I could do math fast, 36%, (laughs) um, that doesn't make it, uh, give it your best, give it your all. If you can walk away saying I gave it everything I could, you won, you won. And then jumps up Bobby, my inner critic, saying, really? Do you believe that? And it's right there. It's like it's, like it's on hyper alert, like, like, a, like a crouching tiger. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Just say it. Come on. Say it. I can challenge you. It's that inner critic is just right there. Man. And you know, I believe that inner critic, you'll always have it. Yeah. You can, just like you, flip the switch. Mm-hmm. You can, you get to learn how to overcome it, how to override it, how to flip the switch. It's always going to be there. It's like, I'm doing really well with my training, but I have a long way to go, which get rid of that, but the, but it's, it's a no, but zone. No, with one T we'll talk about my butt every time, but, but, But. um, (laughs) and, and, uh, yeah, let that inner critic is a, but. It's that, yeah, you're doing really well, but you suck. When you're having these moments and you're listening to Bobby, are you looking for evidence for Bob, for Bobby to be right? Or are you looking for evidence to say, no, Bobby, you're wrong? And what do you do? What does that look like for you? Well, at the risk of sounding like I have multiple personalities, when Bobby, my inner critic, is in charge... I, um, I find evidence like, you know, going up the hill and my knee hurts. Oh, you're not an athlete. And, uh, or, or I'm slower than my friends that like, I'm finding the evidence. You don't have the steam to keep going. I find the evidence and that's actually how I get to flip this. That's how I flip the switch is go, okay, now I see what's happening. And then I think I heard you say something about an inner cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Then I can switch and become my inner cheerleader. Look at what I have done, Becky. Look at how far I've come in this training. Look how, how I've improved already in my, in my endurance and start finding, because you can, you'll always find whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for evidence that you are, I'm going to just say the word that you suck. You're going to find the evidence. It's there. If you're fine, if you're looking for the evidence that you are rock an, star, a rock star athlete, you'll mm-hmm. find it. Inner critic, be gone. Bye. Bye. 